going on YouTube? It's Pete coming in hot with another video. Also known as that guy, Pete, you refuse to invite to gatherings. Figured I'd uh, put out another video for the weekend because um, it's tax season for me, which means I'm working long hours, which means putting out content during the week is something that is just not as feasible, not impossible, but um, just not probable. So figured I'd put out another video today. And what we're going to talk about is a more, I guess, white pill topic in nature. So something we always talk about in the manosphere, we always talk about this idea of finding purpose. In particular, given the modern climate, finding purpose outside of box. Not doing all the things we do for the purpose of box and things like this, right? So something that um, Stardust, shout out to Thinking Ape, always likes to say, and I tend to agree with this idea, is that life essentially is a cope. What do we mean by that? Well, as I see it, life is a cope in the sense that we do all the things that we do in life to deal with the fact that we are not immortal. And because we are not immortal, and we are going to die at some point, death, and by extension, I guess, father time, perhaps they're going to come to the party together. Um, yeah, they're inviting you to your own gathering, your end. Given that that is an inevitability, we have to find a way to give our lives meaning in the interim, which is a form of cope, as some people would say. Um, not cope in the sense that we're lying to ourselves about something. I don't think that like traditional black pill definition of cope is. No, I just think this is how we deal with it. And I think the other thing outside of our primary purpose, which is survival, we are also dealing with this situation where now more than ever, both men and women are not really obtaining romantic fulfillment in life, which of course goes hand in hand with the other purpose of humanity, which is um, reproduction. And a lot of people are just not reproducing, especially in Western countries where populations are on the decline. So when you look at those two things, it's like, okay, I'm a human. I was built to survive and I was built to reproduce. I am not accomplishing either of those things. So how do I cope with that? How do I deal with that? And I think, honestly, that's why a lot of men come to this space, because they were blue pill conditioned to think, well, box is the center, right? Having a family of my own someday. And these are noble goals. These are things that, you know, an idealistic man would want. <clears throat> and even an aware man could want and get I mean, if you look at one of the polls I posted in the community recently, I said, well, guys, what are you looking for? The majority, about just shy of 40%, said that ideally they would like an LTR of some kind. So obviously there is this natural impulse to want companionship and things like this, while probably another 40% either said like, look, I've kind of accepted it for what it is and I found contentment with my solitude, or given the current climate, people are just saying, I'm not content with it, but I don't feel like I have a choice. So there's kind of that that rift there as well. And it was very interesting to see that a majority, um, relatively speaking, um, did want an LTR of some kind. But the reality is that a lot of us, that's not really as, I guess, available and on the table as it was for, say, our either Gen X or Boomer parents, where things were different. No internet, no dating apps, no social media, no overinflated egos and sense of entitlement, no simping, no ridiculous levels of delusion, none of this, right? So it's a very, very different dynamic. And what we're here to talk about is, okay, well... <laughs> How do, we, how do we legitimately cope with that? How do we find purpose in life? 
knowing that there's a very good chance that reproduction and having a family of our own probably is not going to be a likely outcome. It could happen, but it's not as likely as we thought it was going to be. And also coming to terms with the inevitable mortality, the fact that life is just a ride. And thinking about it, you know, where can you really find purpose? Um, you know, just thinking out loud here, I probably have um, five places and perhaps black pill folks would look at this and say these are copes in the sense that you're lying to yourself to um, mask what you really want in life but can't realistically obtain, which I suppose for some that's true. While for others, they look at it like, okay, I've accepted that this is kind of how the world is now. Where where do I go from here? Um, and those guys are coping, but not in the same way that a black pillar might be saying, which is like lying to yourself. They're looking for a legit way like, all right, now what? What do I do with my time? But in the end, life is a cope in one way or the other. So let's go through that. So I think the order I'm going to do it in, we're going to start at home with family, uh, then we're going to go to friends, then we're going to go to work, then we're going to go to hobbies, and then I think we'll bring it full circle with a uh, sense of self, and then I guess we'll go to two copes that I don't recommend, and then I suppose we'll wrap it up from there, yeah? All right. So one of the things I always like to say on this channel, one of the cold fundamental truths Especially women, they like they like to deny this because it implies that they don't give a fuck. Um, but the idea is that outside your front door, there's a good chance that few to none give a shit about you or what happens to you. It's just reality, right? Um, you have like small circles maybe outside that care. But again, by and large, the majority of the populace does not care about you if you are a man. It just is what it is. Um, and whenever women say, well, that's not true. I say, okay, you're the exception. Prove me wrong. I'm not digging through a haystack to find you. But what I'm getting at here is, okay, out there, we kind of know nobody really cares, but for a majority, not all for a majority, there is some semblance of sanctuary at home where you have a family that probably cares. Yes, there are toxic and broken families. I understand this. And sadly, that is an increasing occurrence. From the roots of the tree that are poisoned sprouts a, a dying tree. It's not really a fulfilling life, and I understand that. But I think a lot of people, they tend to take their families for granted. I know I did until I lost my father. But what I can tell you is that obviously family is very important, and it is one place in life where you can certainly find purpose because these are people who care about you you care about them there is some reciprocity there and um, therefore there is um, a reason so to speak a purpose in my life I have my mother and my stepfather they live upstairs along with my special needs brother and my dog Oliver is up there five blocks away is my other brother and his wife along with their dog Daisy that's pretty much the full extent of my immediate family. There are other members of the family, like my stepdad's kids, who do stop by from time to time. And yeah, you know, I get on well enough with them, but they're a little bit more distant from me than the rest. But the general rule is I at home, I have some semblance of a support system. And I think it's very important to have that stable two-parent household um, and that stable family unit. Because when you have that, I think psychologically, it puts you in a better place. If you don't have that, then obviously this is not a viable avenue for you to find purpose. Be that as it may, however, I would suspect that most of you have some semblance of a good family. And I hope that you do not take them for granted, as I did. And um, yeah, I ultimately paid a, a pretty heavy price for taking it for granted. So never forget about the sanctuary that you have at home. Never forget about the people who do care about you, if you have them, because there is purpose in spending time with those people. Because again, when you have people like that, where you have that familial connection and they care, again, I understand it's not the same thing as having a woman give a shit about you. 
I get it, man. But it is still something. And there are people out there who don't even have that. So that's the first one. The second one. Friendships. Building friendships. Um, in particular for men, brotherhood, camaraderie with other men. I did a video about this. Men tend to be very idealistic um, in how they perceive their relationships with other people. So naturally, if you, a man, an idealist, are friends with another man, also an idealist, you both tend to approach the friendship in this idealistic way. And thus, you are more inclined to get this reciprocity as opposed to a friendship with a woman where, true, if neither of you are attracted to each other, you could have some sort of legitimate friendship there. But usually what ends up happening is somebody is attracted to the other person, usually because of the libido gap. It's the guy attracted to the girl. And as a result, she's getting all the perks of a commitment, but she doesn't have to give box. So therefore, she's winning, you're losing. So a way to sidestep that is basically to just be friends with majority of the time men. Because you're being idealistic in your presentation. He is reciprocating that and you have this bond. And what's great about being friends with men is that it doesn't really matter how long it's been since you've seen them, right? When you see them again, it essentially is like you just talked to them yesterday. And of course, that is a beautiful thing. So yes, this does require work on your part to go out and forge these friendships. And yes, online friendships are not the same as IRL friendships. But again, it could give your life a purpose, beyond just the bare bones survival and reproduction that mother nature intended for you. So yes, friends with your being friends with your fellow man obviously could give your life meaning and purpose that um, currently you believe you cannot find with a woman because of the current climate or whatever it may be. In the case of you know sub fives perhaps it's just being incel and you have no choice. I get it. But being incel doesn't mean you can't have friends. So that's the second thing I would say. Okay. Now, the third thing where you find purpose is very cut and dry. Work. Now, the saying in life goes, do what you love and love what you do. Are most people going to be absolutely in love with what they do? No. I would say realistically, you got to at least like what you do you don't have to be madly in love with what you do but you have to at least like what you do for example i am an accountant specifically a certified public accountant my job is to help people save money on their taxes and pay as little tax as possible while remaining within the bounds of the law right that is essentially my job and i extract great enjoyment out of helping people helping them save money Nothing is better than hearing that the joy in their voice, knowing that I can save them thousands of dollars in taxes, depending on their situation, or hundreds of dollars, perhaps in smaller situations. It just depends. But the general gist is that when you work in your life professionally, right, that's like a third of your life is working. You have to do something that you at least enjoy to some degree. Okay, so if there is something you're looking at that might be of interest to you, you have to realistically figure out how to work towards that and make it happen. Um, and I think men, again, as the idealists in life who kind of deal with helping society run and all that stuff um, in the professional sense, we kind of naturally just feel in our element when we're out and about working professionally and helping people. That's kind of our bread and butter, right? Going out and getting the bag. That's our thing. We we love climbing uh, ladders built on meritocracy. Um, we love reaching new milestones, striving for the next big thing. That's kind of what we do. So again, a big place where you can find purpose is in work. So obviously somebody who is neat, which is not employed, educated, or in training, someone like that would probably have a very difficult time. Now, with those three laid out, probably the place where most men go to cope in reality. And again, some may disagree, and that's fine. But from what I have seen, a lot of men kind of, their families are kind of just there. 
um, socialization isn't really what it used to be. And most guys don't really like what they do for a living. They just make the money to pay the bills. So again, those three things are pretty much kind of crossed off their lists in their mind. Though I've already told you why you shouldn't take family for granted. You should obviously, you know, spend time with friends and things like this. And you should at least bare minimum like what you do. Right? Because if you like what you do, it gives you something to shoot for. And then you actually reach your goals and you become what you want to become, professionally speaking, at least. But again, for most people, that doesn't really cut it. So what do they do? Well, they move to option number four. And option number four is hobbies. In Black Pill, we call it hobby maxing. I would say probably the most common form of hobby um, for men is video games. A lot of men play video games, myself included, though I do not play as much as I used to play. I used to play a lot more when I was younger and more blue-pilled. Then you become a little more aware and you realize, all right, there's a bigger picture here. Um, not going to spend all my time plugged into video games. But unfortunately, there are a lot of men who are fully embracing things like the metaverse and all that stuff. And again, you could just get lost in there. And then the real world will just be rendered irrelevant to you. And all you'll be looking for is your next hit of virtual world, your dopamine hit, so to speak. So obviously hobbies, what you do on your free time, that's more auxiliary, but it does give you a sense of purpose. You're doing something that you enjoy. The purpose is contentment. The purpose is enjoying the things that you do. Some people like playing video games. Some people like traveling around the world. Some people like playing sports. Some people like, I don't know, um, watching movies, going to um, Broadway shows, um, stand-up comedy, whatever it is. Obviously, hobbies are going to serve as an excellent um, auxiliary element in your life that supports your work, which is what you're doing with another third of your life. So you figure you're working a third of your life, you're sleeping a third of your life, and then for the last third of your life, you're doing things that you enjoy. That's an ideal work-life balance, right? So, obviously, hobbies is a big part of the life is cope. And as these um, these hobbies get more and more, I guess, virtual and things like this, and escapism becomes more prevalent, it could go either way. It could go either way. I think ideally you probably want hobbies where you're doing stuff with your friends in the real world. Personally, that's what I think. Um, but not everybody would agree with that. All right. And of course, the last one, uh, finding purpose, is self. Making yourself the center. Right. Not doing things for box. Not doing things because you want approval from other people and peers. And that kind of ties into who your friends are, what you do for a living, what your hobbies are, and all that. And it also applies to just self-improve, bruh. Again, I don't really care where you fall on the look scale or anything like that. <clears throat> My question is, when you look at yourself in the abstract, your entire life, do you like it? Do you like it? And if you don't like it, well, then the question is, okay, what don't you like about it? Okay, and now you've determined what you don't like about it. Based on what you have researched, what can be done about it? All right, great. Now you know what can be done about it. What do you need in order to enact that solution? Okay, how do you get those things? Okay, once you get those things, you can then enact the solution and then go from there. That's the general idea. But the point is, again, if there is no... Just self-esteem, and I know this is going to sound cliche as hell, but self-love, this idea of giving a shit about yourself. If you don't give a shit about yourself, how could you expect anyone else to give a shit? Exactly. So, you have to care on some level, I would say. All right? So, at the core, life is a cope. And the way you cope, so to speak... Is to be mindful of what you still have, your family. Um, find value in relationships with your fellow man. Because men view relationships of all kinds, including friendships, the same way you do in an idealistic manner. So there is going to be some reciprocity there. Um, so that's good. 
finding purpose in your work, what you contribute to society. That's important. And also enjoying what you do to some degree. You don't have to love every single minute of it. There's going to be some times where you can't help people and they're going to get pissed at you and you're not going to like it. Yeah, that's part of life. And of course, on your downtime, you find hobbies and things that you enjoy. And ideally, you have people that you can enjoy doing those hobbies with. And at the core of this all, the foundation is the self, right? So the self is very important and you have to be able to find a sense of self-worth in yourself by enacting solutions that you find to the things that you have issue with when it comes to yourself. So that pretty much covers the ways that um, we can find some semblance of purpose in life in the absence of box, in the absence of fulfilling our biological imperative in reproducing and having a family of our own. Remembering the family we already do have. Remembering the friends we've made along the way. Remembering all the accomplishments we've made up until this point, personally. And remembering the things that we enjoy, and most importantly, that we love the person from which all these things branch out, ourselves. But sometimes these things, these methods of coping can go awry. For example, addiction is a very big one. A lot of people deal with the brutal realities of life by abusing substances. I, as a recovering alcoholic of three years sober, uh, can vouch that this is indeed a way to cope. It's not a healthy one. It is very costly. Um, and you're basically destroying yourself physically within because you cannot get your psychological affairs in order. It's not really viable. So I don't really have much else to say about it. But at the end of the day, it is theoretically a way to cope. And the last one, of course, is ending it. Prematurely end the ride, which, of course, if you know the purpose of my channel, it is to stop men from doing that and help them find purpose outside of that, which is the whole point of this video in particular. Um, yeah, that is not a viable option from where I sit, though, objectively speaking, I suppose it is, but not one that I endorse in any capacity. And I encourage anyone who is thinking about that to get help. Now, at the end of the day, when you look at all of this and you really think about it at its core, survival, it's limited by your mortality and reproduction is limited by your success with the opposite sex. That's just the way it is. And my advice would be, again, to find purpose in these other things that I've outlined and to just enjoy the ride for what it is as it is until either hockey mask time comes until uh you know <laughs> until china and russia go off the deep end and then that's going to drag us into some shit we don't want to deal with or if mother nature just decides to wipe us all out with natural disasters whatever the outcome may be as bill hicks would say it's just a ride it's just a ride don't take life too seriously. None of us get out alive anyway. Cliche is hell to say. I know. But it is facts. Be mindful of the people you have. Be mindful of what you've already accomplished. And be mindful of what you enjoy doing. And find purpose and contentment in these things. And remember that you are the center, not box. Once you shift that focus to yourself, I suppose... Um, I suppose um, someone who is Volcel probably would take the monk approach, while someone who is incel might take the androcentric approach, which is similar, except it's a little more involuntarily. That's not even proper English. It's more involuntary, um, at least in terms of the spark that set the chain of events in motion, so to speak. But the point is, you find enjoyment in life through other avenues, should the traditional avenues not be available to you or you do not see them as viable but i know given the blue pill programming of all these years it's a little difficult to imagine a life where you're not conforming to what mother nature intended for you and for what the social constructs of the blue pill beat into your skull since you were a child i understand that it's not easy to go against that grain so to speak and still find contentment especially if you're someone like me who has seen a very very powerful 
validational relationship in his life, and he grew up under it. I get it. For those of you who came from broken relationships, perhaps it's a little bit easier to accept it. I cannot say for certain. Perhaps you feel disappointment knowing that that was the baseline for you. In either respect, it is what it is. And I think that's pretty much all I have to say about this idea of life being a cope. And as a man, finding purpose in life, finding reasons to improve your lot in life, whether you're talking your finances, your social life, your appearance, your, um, I don't know, your social skills in general, talking to people, whatever it may be, life skills, knowledge, and so on. Finding purpose in that without box is the motivation, just for its own sake, for yourself, because you want to do that on your time, on your terms, your way. Yeah, it's kind of hard to imagine a life like that, thinking, um, considering that you were thinking the way you were in the past. Yeah, I get it. But I think that's all I have to say about the topic. Otherwise, once again, I risk rambling and not getting invited to those gatherings, right? So, yeah, feel free to leave a like. Feel free to leave a dislike. Call me an asshole. You disagree. Pete, I think you're a dick. You're coping in the black pill sense, and uh, your words are not helping me at all. In fact, you're demotivating me even more, you D-bag. Go ahead and say that. It's cool, bro. Um, but whatever you do, don't report the video because it is helping somebody. And as long as it's helping somebody, it's worth it. Um, that being said, if you like what you're hearing, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. If you don't like what you're hearing, hey, this is not what I signed on for. I did give the intro video on the channel, so you know what you're getting from time to time. But hey, if it's like, hey, this is what I'm actually getting. Shit, I didn't realize this is what I'm actually getting. Go ahead and unsubscribe. It's all good, brother. I get it. As long as you get the help you need somewhere, that's fine with me. And, um, yeah, stopping men from self-deleting, that's always priority number one. And ladies, if you're watching, I hope you see what it's like to be men in modern times. The so-called alleged uh, silent suffering that men are going through um, in regards to failing at reproduction. And it seems that you're catching up to us, though. Given the modern times, I think Morgan Stanley said, I think um, almost 40% of women aged 30 plus by 2030 are going to be single for life. So you're going to get a taste for that, it seems like, at least in the romantic sense, in shiptum. Or um, actually, I found out the incels do have a term for it. It's called a rom cell, where you're romantically celibate. You can't get a relationship. Yeah, you'll get short term flings, but that's not fulfilling for you. You and I both know that. But in time, you know, perhaps the women watching will understand our perspective a little bit better. And as a result, they can work with that just as we're trying to understand you and we can work with that. And thus we can improve intersex relations and things like this, though some of my viewers no doubt believe that the chances of that happening are basically null and void. Anyway, I am that guy, Pete. You refuse to invite the gatherings. Definitely see you for the next one. Um, I'll try to post during the week, but again, no promises because of my really, really busy schedule. Uh, if anything, worst case scenario, I'll probably see you at the end of this week. So for now, I'll talk to you later. Take it easy and uh, we'll be in touch. Bye.